Good morning, friends. I am coming to you from Chicago O'Hare Airport. Hello and welcome to my travel vlog this weekend. I am going to a conference in Michigan and I had a layover in Chicago. I got up at the crack of dawn. I think I got one and a half hours sleep last night. It's crazy. The flight took off at five. It is just now 8 a.m. And look where I am. Not where you would expect at 8 a.m. When you're in Chicago, and more importantly, you're in O'Hare Airport, you must have Garrett popcorn. I am not gonna eat this right now, obviously, but I have to get some to bring home to my husband. I'm not a big popcorn person, but holy cats, this is my favorite popcorn ever. I'll check in with you guys when I'm a little more awake. Well, it's 10 a.m. and it feels like 5 because I have been up since 3. Woo. I'm looking crazy rough, but that's okay. I'm going to gear up for this non-stop crazy schedule of a conference. I am sitting here in my rental car and they upgraded me. I'm very excited. I actually have a Jeep, although I'm pretty sure I'm not going to drive more than like a three-mile radius. <laughs> kind of anticlimactic. I can't check into my hotel until later in the afternoon and... Um, it's already 11, is it 11 or 10? Oh, maybe it's 11. I can't remember. I might have gone into Eastern time zones. Wait a minute. Woo. If that's the case, then I need to get some food and head over to college for the first sessions. Since this is my first day getting acclimated, I don't know how much I'm going to get vlogged. I'll definitely check in. I'm just calling this my warm-up vlog before the Grand Canyon trip. <laughs> so let's just be gentle. This is like a practice vlog, if you will. All right, I'm gonna go find some grub because even though it's 10 or 11, it feels like it's three for me. So I'm gonna find some lunch. The coffee is wearing off. Gotta get my Niksha Nitro in me, get some Niksha Red, get to fuel up and get my second wind. I am absolutely wiped out. I can't believe that I've tried to survive on an hour, an hour and a half of sleep. I went right here and didn't check in at the hotel and I've been going to sessions and they've been wonderful. But mama needs some food and mama needs some sleep. So I'm just gonna head to the hotel and we'll see if I stick it out for the session tonight or not. I'll check in with you guys later. Hey there, well, this marathon day is coming to a close. It is 8.20 right now, and all I've had to eat today is a little bit of a chicken salad and a granola bar. So I uh, did some investigating. Let me show you what I found. Dun, dun, dun. There is a Trader Joe's up here in Michigan. Apparently it is brand new to this town. So I am going to go and pick up a couple things for the conference this weekend at this Trader Joe's, do some quick power shopping, and then find a place to get some carry out for dinner and head back to the hotel and go nighty nighty. Good morning, friends. I am much more wide-eyed and bushy-tailed today. I am on day two of the writing conference I'm at. I'm at the Festival of Faith and Writing up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was so fried last night, I didn't do anything. I was going to come to the room and uh, share a little bit about my day and some materials and stuff, and I was wasted. That sounds wrong. I had not drank a drop of anything but water, but I was 
absolutely exhausted, wasted, tired. <laughs> so I ordered some carry out and I literally did everything I could not to fall asleep in my food. That's how tired I was. It is gorgeous here. It cannot be more beautiful if it tried. It's like 68 and sunny. And uh, so I'm getting ready to go into the conference. Just wanted to check in with you guys. Hopefully I'll do a much better job of sharing more video with you today of things that I attend. I have my Ningxia Nitro. I took my Ningxia Red this morning, took some great Vitality oils, had a good breakfast, and I am ready to go. So I am gonna power through this conference day. I'll check in with you guys soon. Just have to show you my very cute rental car. I know it's silly and frivolous, but I always wanted a Jeep in college. Now I'm on a college campus driving a Jeep Patriot. So I had walked all the way up to the convention center and what did I do but forget my little badge, which when you're at a conference, I'm gonna get in the shade a little bit, is like a golden ticket. So I have my very pretty festival conference packet. I think this is actually prettier than some conference packets I've seen. I'm getting ready to go to a session on the other side of campus. You have to walk across that walkway there. I am going to go to a session on publishing independently because some writers I really enjoy and a writer I have connected with in real life multiple times is on the panel. Come along with me and let's check this session out. I've been a regular speaker at the Festival of Faith and Music, which is a sister festival to this conference. It's been an awesome day. I've seen some incredible sessions, and right now I'm in the auditorium. And of course, I will not be able to vlog the session, but I'm getting ready to hear one of my favorite authors, Shauna Nequist. I love, love her books, and she has a new book coming out in August. And she is going to give a talk and talk about books that have influenced her and creativity and all sorts of fabulous things. This was one of the sessions I was most looking forward to, uh, so this will be fun. How beautiful is this auditorium? Really lovely. Hey guys, greetings from the festival. You know, on that last day of a conference, you're exhausted, you've heard so many different things. And so I'm kind of losing a lot of steam and energy to connect personally with folks. So in some ways, I'm really appreciating the fact that I'm just going from session to session to listen to the people that I have come to this um, festival to hear from, authors that are really important to me, that I really enjoy reading, like Sarah Bessie, um, Addie Zierman, Preston Yancey. I just went to a really really interesting presentation and I think it was one of the most informative ones I've seen all weekend. Uh, there were three different editors, uh, from, one from the Washington Post, one from uh, Christianity Today, and also there's a website called Hermeneutics. Uh, some women who have edited and written for Christianity Today have put that website together. And then another very well established writer did a panel on how to pitch articles for online websites. It was so informative and fascinating and as someone who is just beginning to learn more about that. I just took so many notes. I can type faster than I can write. <laughs> I just wanted to take a minute and kind of rest. I'm sitting in the car with the air conditioning. I bought this turkey club wrap yesterday at Trader Joe's. I'm gonna have to remember this tip for future conferences, but I found a Trader Joe's near me, picked up some salads and some fruit, and uh, there's a grocery store near me as well, so I got a little breakfast cup this morning. And so planning ahead and getting that stuff in my hotel fridge has really helped me. Um, every conference is laid out differently. Some I've gone to and they include the price of a buffet in the conference, but most don't, and you have to come up with your own meals. In terms of my essential oils and my wellness, I've been taking my Ningxia Red every morning with some oils in it. I 
love Copaiba Vitality, uh, Frankincense Vitality. I've been putting those in every morning just to keep me healthy and above the wellness line. And I've been applying Energy Essential Oil Blend, uh, White Angelica Essential Oil Blend. And then uh, yesterday I had some tension that I applied some peppermint oil around my temples and the back of my neck. Really made me feel a lot better. Look at all that stuff. This is my public library tote that I've shown you guys in other videos before with my program on my computer. Got my sunglasses here. Makeup bag from this morning. I've got another bag of stuff. So I'm gonna finish eating, um, have a little bit of my wrap, fuel up and get some water, and then go into the conference center and get ready for an afternoon of sessions. And then I'll probably leave the campus area and grab some dinner by myself just have some nice solitude as I'm processing all this information. And then there's an evening at the campus arena with the main speaker, Nadia Boltz Weber, who I just think is absolutely incredible. I've read both of her books and um, she's doing a presentation and speaking and there'll be some book signings. There's not a lot of stuff posted about what I can video and what I can't. So I'm just trying to really err on the side of caution and be careful about what I can vlog. And like I said earlier, I am using this vlog as a warm up to my grand Canyon vlog that's coming. Uh, get home. We'll be home for a couple of days and then my husband and I are going to head to the Grand Canyon in about a week and so I cannot wait to share uh, those vlogs with you. All right, enough babbling. Time to have a turkey club. Good morning friends, I wanted to very specifically show you the sign in the background there that is of 8th Day Books, which is my favorite bookstore in the world. I have written about it, I can link some posts for you if you haven't checked out my blog. But I just wanted to show you this room, this is a room that, that you will find probably at, at most conferences and especially writing conferences where different publishers and bookstores have their books, writers, authors, agents and the like connect. Here. And most people don't vlog, so I probably have the only little camera out in this room and people are probably like, what is she doing? But I just wanted to show you a little bit of some of the wonderful books here. I picked the busiest day, which makes me so happy because I love seeing everyone finding eight day books and finding the treasures that Warren curates at his store. Here's a just a smattering. Got a reader here as well. It is the best bookstore in the world. It really is. I'm so glad to hear you say it. <laughs> there is Warren. I call him the holy man, but don't tell him I said that. One of the most learned, wise, and humble people I've ever met. An incredible curator of books, the owner of Eighth Day. Timely and timeless. Classics in religion, philosophy, history, and literature. Really, really love Eighth Day. And I've talked about this on my blog, but this is actually a reader that came out a couple of years ago um, where different folks from all walks of life share their reflections on Eighth Day, and this is the first place that I was published. So I have an essay in here talking about Eighth Day as well. The store is housed in an old bookstore, and this beautiful building is full of books. <laughs> Friends, it's been a long weekend. I'm coming to you Saturday night um, on my way to the last session of the conference. One of the things I've been looking forward to the most. 
I'm going to hear Nadia Boltzweber speak at the arena here in this college. Really excited to hear what she has to say. It's been an incredible time. I'm still processing everything. Just a glorious festival of faith and writing. I'll share some of the presentation with you tonight if I can. I'm about out of words, so that's probably a good thing. When I'm out of words, it means I just need to be quiet and still and listen and process. Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Here Jesus comments on the things we do or don't do so that people will think of us in a certain way. And this parable forces me to examine all the ways I try to protect my favorite parts of my personality, my coolness, my supposedly badass, cutting ass, <laughs> cutting edge <laughs> attitude. <laughs> 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 carefully create a persona, but it's always one that's only partially true. And maintaining this partial truth, this creative personality, this assembled self can be exhausting. Facebook is the perfect medium for this bit of artisanship. It allows us to present an image of ourselves from just the parts of our lives and personalities we wish to project. This is why we must never see updates on Facebook that say, spent the evening alone again last night, <laughs> or wonder if I'll ever be loved, or I just manipulated my spouse to get my own way. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, friends. It is Sunday morning. The conference wrapped up yesterday. I really, really wanted to come back to the room and chat with you guys about all things Festival of Faith and Writing. I had my pretty makeup on and my hair was done and y'all, I was so tired that I could not even pick up that camera. <laughs> it was all I had in me to just um, get my makeup off my face, get into my PJs. I had a lovely conversation with my husband and I fell flat asleep. I actually fell asleep watching SNL. <laughs> I am going to show you a very quick room tour, show you the haul of books that I picked up, and um, then I've got to take a shower and frantically pack and get out of here. My flight doesn't leave until later mid-afternoon, and I'm a little nervous because there's all sorts of crazy storms and thunderstorm activity going on in Texas, hovering right over my airport. And I've got a non-stop flight home, which is really exciting, but I am really hoping that my flight won't be delayed. So let me show you a really quick room tour. One of the things I really like about this room is that it's actually a suite, and you're paying just a regular hotel room rate, but I have a suite. All my junk's there that I'm unpacking slash packing. And then I've got all my books and stuff set out here on the desk. All of these are books that I picked up. I know. I bought a handful of books. And it'll be interesting to pack it all. I know that I can order this stuff on Amazon, but uh, I thought it was really important to support uh, local booksellers and also 8th Day Books, which is my favorite bookstore in the world. So I very intentionally purchased these from the publishers themselves, uh, the bookstore at Calvin College, just to give them the support and eighth day books. Is this not the most beautiful journal you guys have ever seen? Oh, I just love it. It's a Monet painting, but the colors in this notebook, I mean, I've seen these paper blanks journals before, but I've just never seen such a gorgeous pattern. And of course, Warren at eighth day books had this uh, in his journal collection here, and I snapped that up the very first day I was here. I'm very close to needing a new happy list journal. This is gonna be the perfect size and the perfect journal for that and it's lined and I love that. So these were the books I picked up. These two books I got at 8th Day Books and I'm keeping this on here so I can show you. Uh, in the Bible, Sarah, before she was named Sarah, was Sarai. And uh, I used to work for 8th Day Books, which is why I'm such a big fan. They're just uh, almost like family spiritual friends. And so the owner always calls me Sarai. He has for 20 years and I love it. So he wrote that on there because he was holding it for me, so I saved it. This is actually an incredible book that I've heard a lot about. Scott Cairns is a poet and he was at, here at the festival and he's a very big friend of 8th Day. 
And so I've known about his work for years through them. He took a pilgrimage to different monasteries and holy places in Greece and wrote a memoir about it. And I'm really excited to read that. This was just a little gem that I picked up at Eighth Day. This is the kind of stuff I can find at Eighth Day that I don't see anywhere else. Never heard of this author, never heard of the book. It's called A Monk's Alphabet, Moments of Stillness in a Turning World. This gentleman is a monk, and it's filled with little vignettes and essays, and each one starts with the next letter of the alphabet. It's just small and lovely, and I can't wait to read it. This is hilarious. I had been looking at this book and kind of intrigued by it. I really like memoir and spiritual memoir. I'm not a church-going commitment phobe in that regard, <laughs> personally, but I had heard some interesting things about the writing in this. What's so funny is I went to dinner, uh, let's see, a couple nights ago at the conference with some friends, and a couple of the ladies at dinner are wonderful, uh, fabulous writers. And I sat next to this lovely gal and we just chatted about nothing really too book focused and had a lovely time. And I realized it was the author. I didn't even realize that this was the book that she had written. And um, I've met lots of authors here, but I had been really interested specifically in this book. So I'm kind of bummed that I couldn't, I didn't even have a chance to talk to her about her book, but she's a delightful gal. So I picked her book up. Um, I had an incredible story of how I met this author. It was a pretty interesting, serendipitous moment. Um, I don't have time for it on the vlog here, but I'll share more, hopefully, in future videos or a favorites video. But this is a memoir she wrote, Anne of Green Gables, My Daughter and Me, What My Favorite Book Taught Me About Grace, Belonging, and The Orphan in Us All. It's a memoir, and she adopted her daughter, and she herself is adopted. And so um, because of uh, just different things I want to read about and personal journeys and whatnot, I thought this book would be really beautiful. I started reading it in the store and was hooked and um, met her afterwards. So great story there, but I'll tell you about that later. And then Addie Zerman is a great writer. I love her blog. I love her book, her first book. This is her new one, and I didn't own it, and so it was a on sale for a really great price here. Uh, so I bought it from the publisher. I'm really drawn to well-written memoir and I'm really drawn to voice and memoir because I am trying to find my writing voice right now. So I think that I really am drawn to, to similar types of voices. The story is redemptive and if the voice is really interesting, if I just can't put it down because of the tone of the book, then I will read it uh, and read it fast and that is Addie's writing for sure. So Lucy Shaw is a very well-known and famous, incredible writer, poet, teacher. Um, she has been at the festival for years. She's actually in her mid-80s and still very prolific. She just published this book this year. And she, unfortunately, was supposed to be here and was ill and could not be here. I was so sad. But this is her newest book, and I'm so excited to read it. It's probably going to be one I'm going to take on the plane. And then these four books are actually my own books that I owned before I came to the festival, but they are all authors that were at the festival, and I wanted them signed. I heard Nadia Boltz Weber speak, and she's incredible. It's not for everyone, but her words really spoke to me, and so I had her sign my book. Sarah Bessie is one of my favorite authors and just a wonderful, sweet human being. Got to hug her and meet her in person at this festival, and I had her sign this book. Uh, Danny Shapiro is an author that I haven't read a lot of, but this book on writing is one of my very favorite books on writing of anyone. This is called Still Writing, The Perils and Pleasures of a Creative Life. And I love how she signed it. She circled pleasures and wrote more of these to Sarah. I just thought that was a sweet page. These are really cute postcards that they were selling. So I bought some of those to support the festival. And love it. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna pack it today. Got another eighth day mug because it is maroon, my husband's favorite color, his alma mater color. I have two of these coffee mugs at home. I know it sounds excessive, but I collect mugs and I love them. These are handmade. Um, I think in North Carolina somewhere, but the company is Deneen Pottery. If I can find the link, I'll put it down below, but their coffee mugs are incredible. So that's all the awesome book loot that I got. It's nice. You come in here and you've got almost like a little kitchenette here. Got a fridge and a microwave and a sink and, and then some nice sun and here's your sleeping room. Really comfy bed. I picked up a last minute travel diffuser because it was cheaper. And I gotta be honest, it's not my favorite, but I picked it up for the size because my orb diffuser from Young Living had broke. And I'm probably gonna return this when I get home. It's okay, but it's just not a very powerful stream of steam coming out of it. And I just think that I can find a better travel diffuser. So here's the oils that I had for traveling and sleep support, Tranquil, love that. RC, respiratory care, complete staple. This is a 
Valor essential oil blend that I just kept by my bed because I'm running kind of low and so I would just spray it when I needed it. And peace and calming too. So I have this really awesome little outlet thing that plugs in. It's a three prong and you can see there's two USB ports on the side and then three prong outlet and that's really nice for when you're traveling. So that's the room tour. I am going to pack all this stuff up, take a shower and uh, check out, um, I think I'm gonna stop by a Tim Hortons. I love that little coffee place. I had Tim Hortons when I was in Canada and I loved it. It's probably like their version of Dunkin' Donuts. It's not fancy, but um, there's one right over here by our hotel. I could almost see it out my window. And um, I think they have it up here because we're in Michigan and we are pretty close to Canada, at least much closer than I normally am where I live. So uh, Elizabeth Madero, you thought you might get a kick out of that. You, I don't even know if you went to Tim Hortons when you lived in Canada. Canada <laughs> if you're watching this but um, I really really love their coffee all right I'll check in with you guys later bye hey friends well I'm not on a plane right now last time you saw me I was in my hotel room this morning <sighs> crazy development uh, there was bad weather at home and apparently they had a lot of air traffic issues so my flight was canceled went to the airport and they booked me on a non-stop flight tomorrow. But I am on standby for a flight tonight and a flight really early in the morning. And so in a matter of a couple of hours, we'll know if these flights are canceled too. The weather is just bad in uh, Texas. I have been killing time. I just went and got a pedicure. I am literally pulled over in a parking lot in the shade and sitting in this rental car. So there are my little red toesies. So there's never a dull moment in these travels. I'm hoping and praying that the flight is safe and that I can get home tonight on this non-stop flight, but I'm number three as a standby, so we'll have to see if I get on the flight. I'll check in with you guys soon and let you know if I'm getting home tonight or tomorrow. Hey guys saga of the day. I got on a flight on standby. Didn't have to stay in Grand Rapids for the night, so that's awesome. So I'm actually on the plane right now, if you can even hear me. And i um, on my way back home. So I'm going to go ahead and end this vlog here, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.